for a half hour, throw that water away, and now I consider this it's ready to be you know, Hey everybody, I'm back over at Daryl's and you know in a previous video we talked about biochar a little bit. Daryl was just getting intrigued by it. Today he's going to go over 10 reasons you should use biochar to supercharge your garden. So don't go anywhere. You got, you got the goods on biochar. Right. If you remember from my last video, I, I, this is just charcoal that I've gleaned from my uh, wood stove over the winter, burnt, just burning regular you know, firewood. I separated it from the ash. That's what you saw me do last time. But this is all just my firewood you know, that burned in the fireplace. And what I do is I put this little basket here. And I think I can get it all in there. All right, that took the whole bucket. I'll let that just clear a little bit. <laughs> okay, then I just keep shaking this, and I'm gonna to try to get all the ash out of here. I'll collect that down below there. The ash is, you know, very alkaline, so you gotta be careful garden, putting it in your garden beds. I mean, a little bit is okay, uh, especially if you need to alkalize your soil, if you have acidic soil, but you what gotta is, be careful. What is lime? Is that acidic? Lime is just ground up limestone. No, I know, but is it acidic or? Oh no, it's alkaline. And see, that's the other thing. That's why I don't really need. I, I, I'm on limestone here. I'm, you know, I'm sitting on limestone, and so you don't need to. Yeah, it's already alkaline soils here, a little bit. Not not too much, but you know, I don't need to make it more so. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't take you know 30 you, seconds or so. Did you just get that basket at like? Walmart or yeah, I think I got a Lowe's, uh, maybe maybe in the water filtration kind of department, or I think that's oh, what okay. the, maybe for swimming pools or you know I don't know. You could use lots of different things. You could use a basket even, you know, mm -hmm. woven basket. So that's good enough. I got most of the ash out. I'm going to take. Okay, you can see the ash in the little pile of ash there. I'm just dumping that where I'm filling some ground in with wood chips and raising the soil level. I'm just going to add the the ash to that. It's not going to hurt anything. This still had some ash clinging to it. I put it in this bag and I laid it in one of my garden beds. For, so it got rained on a couple times. And that cleaned it up, got rid of all, you know, all this really fine dust uh, that was in there. Because I'm getting ready to put this in my pond, I'll tell you why in a minute. And I didn't want to get all that charcoal dust just floating all over the place, so I, I let it wash out a little. So what I have here is just pure charcoal. and. You know, the way charcoal is made is it, it has to be in a low oxygen environment, okay? So I, the way I'm making it in the wood stove is I, I let my ashes build up in the bottom of the stove a little bit, and so there's going to be pieces of wood that end up kind of embedded in that ash, and they never burn up. They, they turn into charcoal. And you can tell just by snapping it, and, you know, it's very lightweight, mm -hmm. and it has a certain clinkiness if you, you know, clink them together. Anyway. It, 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 you know, there might be some pieces in here that aren't true charcoal. They might still be a little woody, but most of it seems to have turned into charcoal. Look at that. Yeah. See, I went to art school, and we yeah. always drew with charcoal. Look at that. Yeah. And you know what's, what else is cool about charcoal? It's beautiful. Watch this. You can eat it. What? Oh, that's right. And what it does, it absorbs toxins. So if you get a stomach ache, maybe you ate some bad food or something, you know, eat, eat charcoal. And, and, you know, you can buy little capsules that have... Obviously, you don't want to overdo it. <laughs> but, but. It doesn't taste bad. It doesn't but have a taste, just, really. I, I, well, I have to taste that. Yeah, there's nothing to it. Okay. It really doesn't have much taste. Right. Wow. So, what I'm about to do is a kind of a two-for-one job here. Because all I have in this bag at this point is charcoal. Well, if you put this in your garden like this, you all know what charcoal does, it absorbs things, okay? That's how it absorbs toxins out of your belly, that's what I was just talking about. But So if you put it in like this into your garden, it will absorb all kinds of nutrients from your garden soil. And, and now it's locked up in here and unavailable to your plants that you're gonna put in there. So if you just dump straight charcoal on your garden, it's not gonna do well for you at all. I've done that. It, it'll tie up nutrients for, for a few years even. Wow. Okay, so you, you, what you have to do is charge up the biochar, okay? And, and, and the way you can do that, you, you're wanting to put nutrients in, 
and you're wanting the, the bacteria, the, the microbes that, that inhabit the soil, you're giving them food, so you want them to inhabit the, the charcoal also. So in the simplest terms, you are charging charcoal, which becomes biochar. That's right. Okay. And, and it, you, you know, think of these things, these little pieces, and, and you know, the first batch I did, I broke it up into real small pieces, and I put it on my snow pea planting. Uh, but I've decided that I don't think I need to spend so much time breaking it into real tiny pieces. And the thing about biochar is it's different than other additives you might put in your soil. You know, adding nitrogen or some nutrient or mineral or something like that, azomite or, you know, whatever. Uh, over time, the, the plants are going to draw on that and, and kind of deplete it. And so, you, you know, you need to replace it from time to time. You're constantly adding this stuff. With biochar, it's always going to be there. It'll be there for you, for your kids, for your grandkids, a thousand years from now. What? It is going to be in your soil doing what it's going to do, the magic that it's going to do. You mean that little piece of black? Yeah. Well, it's it not... might break into smaller pieces, but oh. it's not going to get consumed, and it's not going to get depleted of, of the good stuff, okay? Because oh. you got to look at, this is like a condominium for microbes. Okay. Okay, because the way this is structured inside, if you look at it on a microscopic level, it's lots of little tiny holes and cavities, kind of like a sponge or something would be, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and these are all that inner surface. It's on the surface is where these microbes grow. They attach to the surface and, and do their growth there. And so there's a lot more surface area in this little chunk than what's just on the outside. It's, it's full of pitted little holes all through it. Cool Don't thing. the microbes get used up? Well, they keep growing. They, they reproduce. Oh. And, and, you know, as long as you... Now, you know, you might be adding uh, manure and other additives over the years to those beds. Well, you're putting in nutrients that the biochar can, can absorb some of that if it, needs to, if it needs more nutrients for the mm -hmm. microbes. You mm -hmm. know, it'll, it'll mm -hmm. absorb some, mm -hmm. but it's not going to, you know, at that point it won't really deplete your soil or anything. And so what I'm doing with this now is a kind of a two-for-one job. We have a whole lot of bluegills living in here. The fish waste is taking the nutrient level up in my pond. It's, it's, it's heavily, you know, it's a high nutrient pond water. Nutrient dense. Nu there's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> and maybe you want to get a picture of that right there at the edge of the pond. Okay. That's the algae. I have string algae that grows in my pond. And it's just getting a little start right now, but in the heat of the summer, it comes on strong. And I have a, like a, a skimmer like you'd use on a swimming pool, a, little, a, long, a net on a long handle. And I go out there and scoop it up. And I, you know, the pond's not that big, so I can keep it pretty cleaned out with that. But if I had enough biochar, and this is not gonna be enough to do the job, but if I had a whole bunch, and I, what I'm about to do, if I did a whole bunch of these all around the pond, I'm gonna set this in the water and, and attach it to a little rope so it can sink down in the water a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna let it there for a few weeks. And what's gonna happen is that charcoal is gonna be absorbing nutrients from my pond water, and maybe some microbes that are living in there already too. Then, when I put that on my garden, that's charged up biochar, and it's gonna do the job I want, okay? And it'll continue to do it for the rest of my life. Wow. And you need one application, just, you know? They don't seem too afraid of him. Nah, <laughs> they stare at him. <laughs> they know he doesn't have the nerve to go in, that's right? right? he's never been in there. <laughs> he goes, if I jumped in there, it would take me a week to dry all that fur. <laughs> well, he wants it though, right? Oh yeah, he lunges at him, but he, he ain't going to get in there. Now, I'm only doing this pond thing because it's a two-for-one thing for me. It, it charges up my biochar and hopefully gets rid of some of the nutrients out of my pond. But it, maybe you don't have a pond. Well, you could take a five-gallon bucket and put some weeds, whatever, in there and let it make a, 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 a tea you know, that, that's going to grow microbes and all that. You, you know? mean with water? Yeah, you fill it with water and then you could soak your biochar in that. Or you could just add the biochar to your compost pile and then whenever you end up using that compost in the future, it'll already be pre-mixed with biochar and it's all charged up from the microbes and nutrients that are in your compost pile. So those are a couple ways you can do it. And so real quick, let me go through. I got a little list here. I don't want to forget anything. The 10 reasons why you want to be doing this, okay? All right, first one is improves the nutrient retention of your soil. Okay, so if you're adding manure or any kind of fertilizers of any kind and all, 
the biochar is going to absorb some of that and hold it in the, in there and make it available to plants. And it's, it's not going to get lost. It's not going to get washed away in the rain or anything like that. It, it holds on to it. Okay? It improves root growth and development. Well, that makes sense. You know, that they're going to have more nutrients available. And, and some of the other things I mentioned improve the soil structure and all that. So it improves the soil structure and increases fertility. So you're improving your soil, not just the fertility of it, but the structure of the soil, you know, it's uh, you're putting these granular things in there, it's going to keep it more loose and open and more loamy and break up the clay, and you know, you're going to mix it with some clay, that would be a good thing to loosen up clay a little bit and mix in with it. It reduces nitrogen runoff into the groundwater, and that, that this could be a real important thing with uh, a large farming operation, where, you know, maybe he's going to get large quantities of biochar, and spread it on his 50 acres and and you know now when he adds his nitrogen fertilizer the biochar is going to help hold that in his field in the soil make it available to the plants instead of running off in the next rain and mm -hmm. into the rivers and, and all that we have a lot a lot of trouble with that from big agriculture so that that's a big important thing it's going to do all right it, it holds water in the soil for a longer period of time so your soil will not dry out as fast because the biochar is holding water too. Uh, it facilitates soil microbes. That's what we've already talked about. You're gonna be putting all kinds of beneficial microbes into your garden soil, which helps your plants grow. It improves aeration and decreases compaction. So that's what I was talking about, to mix in with a, a clay soil or something like that. It's gonna loosen things up and get more air into the soil. So it overall increases your yields of whatever you're growing. Okay, since it's doing all these good things for the soil and keeping nutrients for the plants, you're, you're going to get more food out of your garden because of it. And it's non-toxic and it won't burn your plants. You don't have to worry about putting too much on or anything like that. You can add biochar every year if you want to you know, keep improving the soil structure or whatever. Nothing to worry about. And it's odorless. Nothing, you know, it doesn't stink like some fertilizers you might be working with. Uh, and it re actually removes bad smells or smells of any kind, because remember, it's, it's absorbing, charcoal absorbs. Yeah, so, don't forget all the uh, water filters <laughs> have charcoal. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you got to have charcoal. In fact, you know, the, I don't know, maybe I mentioned this before, I don't know on the other video, but when when uh, the pilgrims were coming across and the, the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria, you remember that? Oh, we all yeah. learned that in school. Well, that was a long journey across the ocean, and they, they had to bring fresh water with them because they're out there in the ocean. You know, maybe they could catch some rainwater, but other than that, they had to bring fresh water for the journey. And they had big barrels, oaken barrels that they, they filled with water. And the way they kept it drinkable was they would burn biscuits and create charcoal, and they'd throw the burnt biscuits in the water, and they'd take some silver coins because silver is antibacterial. Okay, and they'd throw them in the bucket. Antiviral too, right? So between the two, yeah. they had good drinking water. Yeah, that's awesome. So, char you know, charcoal is a really cool thing. So, you know, you're, you're incorporating this into your garden and turning it into a, a condominium for microbes. Have you gotten all your list there yet? That's the list. I wanted to just say, now, assume you've got a, a, a small little urban garden. You don't have a fireplace, so you can't burn wood. You don't eat, and you, you can't burn wood in the city. Uh, so where was, would the urban gardener come up with biochar besides buying a complete preparation? Well, yeah, I mean, I was just going to say, a lot of people are getting into this as a commercial venture to make some money off their land. And, in fact, that's what I'm going to start doing with all my dead bamboo canes. And I'm going to, you know, make biochar, bamboo biochar. Mm. And uh, if I get up and running with it, I'll have a whole bunch of it. Of course, i got a lot of garden beds I need to cover. But at some point, I may have some to sell and trade and things too. Mm -hmm. So um, you're yeah. going to need more nylon bags. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, this this is a bag that I got in a, in a laundry where they had laundry supplies. Yep, okay, yep. so that was and it has a bigger openings in it. The other one, it'll hold. It, it it's for sitting in a five gallon bucket and pouring paint into, and then squeezing that paint through, oh. and that way. So, so you can use it for a sprayer without clogging the sprayer. Right, right. Any little solids that might be in there would be oh, separate. Oh, wow. So that has much finer mesh on it. All right, let's... But it holds a lot more, too. Okay, great. Let's check it out. All right, so all I'm going to do here, I've got a little brick. Keep this from getting lost in the pond. And I'm just going to tie this on here. Make sure it's 
sure that's attached. Now, that'll float for a little while, but eventually it'll absorb enough water, it'll, it'll sink. That'll, that'll sink pretty quick, and, and then I'll just let it sit for about two weeks, and then I'll, I'll put it in a garden bed somewhere. Katie's going, okay, now, am I supposed to get that, or what? <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, well, how will the fish react, or, or the, they, they don't, don't even feel they it? They don't seem to pay any mind, though. And how many weeks, did you say? Uh, I'll probably leave it at least two weeks. I, I don't know. The, you know how long it really takes Maybe mm -hmm. it probably charges up in a few days I have no idea I have a feeling if you put charcoal in your compost it's going to take longer right I don't know I mean I guess it would depend on how much it rained and all of that right, you right. Know? I don't know though I don't think that's going to leak yeah, I'm going to have to get another route I'll yeah. do that one later Okay. hey as Daryl has said so many times he is still learning you know, after gardening for 45 years, you can always still learn something new, and this is something you new you're trying for the first time, it's, right? Yeah, I've known about it for many years, but and you know, been pretty fascinated by it, but I, I just never bothered to do it. And yeah. Now it's once I started, it's like, yeah, why am I? I should have been doing this a long time ago. Well, plus you have the issue with the pond. Right. That, yeah, that's more incentive. I, I want to try to clean this pond up. I don't. You know, another option would be to make a biofiltration system where I run a pump through to, to do a similar kind of job, but I, I'd rather not have to have a pump running or anything. I, I want to do it all natural, but I know it's going to take a whole bags. lot of bio. <laughs> I'm going to have to have it all around there probably. <laughs> well, you burn wood all winter, so you're going to have it. I'll have that, and I'll be making the bamboo biochar. The other thing I'm going to do though is uh, I'm going to have a hose from this pond that goes down to my lower garden and it'll be, I'll just have a siphon already set up, so I'll just, when I turn the nozzle on, it'll start drawing water. <coughs> and I would, I any watering I need to do down below will be charged up nutrient-filled pond water, so that's good for the garden. Wow. And I'm taking down the nutrient-laden water and the fresh water coming in, it'll be, it won't be as dense with nutrients, you know, I hope. Right. But right. that's only if I need to do a lot of watering. That's right. It's, it's always, uh, a learning experience. I think Wendell Berry was the one that said uh, gardening and farming is the education of a lifetime so we just keep learning. Hey if you like this video and you'd like to see more videos like this please leave a comment below. Please be sure and subscribe and share this channel so it can grow and we look forward to seeing you again very soon. Take care and was I, supposed, was I supposed to say something? When I point... You didn't tell me my line. <laughs> Did you just expect wisdom to come spilling out? It I mean, usually it does. <laughs> I usually have to, like, zip it. <laughs> oh, zip it. Right. <laughs> hey, what were you saying, Stephen? Uh, oh, I just wanted to add that I had, I saw you guys talking about the charcoal, and I had this experience a couple years ago where I made a bunch of charcoal to make biochar for myself, but I left it in a trash can filled with the ash and the charcoal. I never charged it. And a bunch of rain filled up over summer, and I just left the trash can there. And what I noticed over summer as it got hot, I expected mosquitoes and the larvae to be in the water or algae or something. The sun was beating on it all summer. Nothing ever grew in it. Wow. So what I assume happened is the, the, the charcoal sucked up a ton of stuff. And I also think that the ash played a role too because it raised the alkalinity yeah. super, super high. So probably nothing could grow in it. Right. But anyways, it was sort of a discovery of, oh wow, maybe this can help to clean up water. Or if I put a bag of just straight charcoal in my animal's water, that should help with reducing the amount of algae in the summer because that's a common problem. And yeah. I have experimented with it with my pigs and my chickens and it did reduce the algae. So it is able to pull out and suck in. Wow. But guess what? That same... <laughs> That same trash can that I've had there for the last couple of years, I just looked and there's mosquito larvae in it now. Mm -hmm. So now, so it's like used up for it. It's, I, this is just my guess is that the charcoal has sucked in everything that it can. It's used up all of its electrons or whatever to hold things to it. So now it, that it can't do that, um, it's did just, you have it open to the rain all the time all yes, during that time? Yes, it's been open the entire okay, time. Okay, well maybe new rainfall came in and water overflowed and eventually you got rid of that heavy alkaline conditions from the ash maybe. and it was just more like rain water and then the mosquito mm. larva could survive. Could be. There's still some ash in the bottom though when I stirred it up. Hmm. But it's not stirred up into the water. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to throw that out to people that I think it's a good idea just to experiment with it yourself and see if you notice a difference in your water this summer.
throw, yeah. throw it in a, the mesh bag in your chicken uh, water and see. Well, I have a 55 gallon trash can that's about two thirds full of ash and mm. ch the charcoal. And you're saying uh -huh. just fill it up with water and, and leave it. Um, I think I'd try to get rid of the ash. Yeah. Just go get rid of the ash. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't add the ash into your animal water or anything. Just use the charcoal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was just, that's that was the oh, no, extra variable that I yeah. I don't know exactly what's happening in the water. Okay. So I need to still, I need to fill. Um, but I did myself, I did test with just charcoal in my animal's water, and it did way slow down the algae growth. Wow. So well, one more thing I'll mention for, you know, instead of going into the whole thing myself, if, if you're interested in biochar, Go back and, and look up how this all got started. It's a fascinating story from from Brazil area, Central South America. Mm -hmm. uh, Cana, I don't know how to pronounce it. Terra Preta. Terra Preta, yeah. yeah it's it's black it. earth is what it really means in, in English. And they, you know, well, I won't go into the story. Look it up. Uh, how did we learn about biochar in, in the beginning? Because we've only known about it for a few decades now. Wow. And really, it's taken this long for people to really realize the potential. And mm -hmm. now lots of people are making biochar and selling it and things like that. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's very fascinating. Okay, great. Thanks.